Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-439. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures Specimen is to be kept at Armed Research Site 45, Hazardous Life Forms Wing, in a sealed, locked 38-liter, 10-gallon, Type G containment unit with connected oxygen supply. Specimen is to be fed through feeding tube 16A with approved nutritive substance XF. Handling is available to level 2 personnel or higher. Description SCP-439 is an insect of unknown origin, somewhat resembling a grayish, semi-translucent Fortificula auricularia, common earwig approximately 2.5 centimeters in length. Originally located or obtained in mainland China in the province. No other specimen has been found as of yet. SCP-439 is relatively harmless when encountered on safe terms, aside from the ability to deliver a firm, painful pinch with its abdominal forceps. The true hazard this creature poses lies in its habitat construction and reproduction which is initiated when the specimen enters the mouth of a sleeping human. This will only occur with humans. Other life forms have been presented to SCP-439 and have been uniformly rejected. Upon location of a suitable host, the specimen will hide itself in the immediate vicinity and wait until the victim has fallen asleep. How it is able to determine the state of sleep is unknown, but it has shown to be accurate in times out of Upon entering the mouth of the new host, SCP-439 will travel down the trachea and take up residence in one of the victim's lungs. In approximately 4 to 8 hours after awakening, the host will complain of chest pains and shortness of breath, followed shortly by abdominal cramping. The tightness in the chest will increase, as well as a fever, until the host is incapacitated. It is around this time that the onset of fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva FOP, occurs, a disorder that is normally genetic in nature that promotes growth of bone into muscle tissue. Since the production of new bone growth is so rapid, the procedure is also quite painful for the subject, with new bone spurs occasionally protruding through the flesh. While this is happening, the host will become compelled to seek shelter in a darkened enclosed space, such as inside household cabinetry, closets, or heating ductwork. Within the first three days without treatment, the host will become completely withdrawn and immobile due to the extreme pain of the new bone growth coupled with difficulty breathing. At this point, the subject's body will begin the final stage of transformation into a bone hive. Having concealed itself, in its new home. The body of the host will huddle into a fetal position. Entire portions of the skeletal structure will shift along until the host body is roughly spherical in nature and reduced to three quarters of its original size. New bone protrusions will continue to grow and, if possible, anchor the body permanently to its new location. The skeletal structure is almost completely unrecognizable having been converted to a round cage to protect the internal organs and colony. At this point, transformation is complete. The original queen that entered the host will have produced 20 to 30,000 offspring that function as workers, drones, and warriors in a typical insect hive hierarchy. Since only the queen is capable of reproduction, the rest of the hive's inhabitants are fortunately harmless save for large, strong abdominal forceps of the warriors. The interior of the original host is nearly unrecognizable as a human body. Certain organs are removed and used as food, while others are modified by the worker insects to serve as egg incubation chambers. An ingenious method exists of using the host's own digestive system to process pieces of organic materials collected by the warriors into a nutritive slurry that feeds both the colony and sustains the host hive structure. After four to six months, a new queen will emerge from within the ranks and choose a drone to mate with. At this point, 
the colony will destroy itself by rupturing, upon which the majority of the insects die. Workers and drones are unfit to survive outside the host hive, and warriors will abandon the site, wandering away, their tasks complete. No food will be consumed by the warriors that isn't nutritive slurry produced by the hive of origin. The new queen will venture out, fertilized, to search for her own new hive. Incredibly, the trauma of evacuation is not what finally causes biological activity to cease in the hive, but starvation. Addendum In an experiment, Dr. performed a range of tests to determine the extent of damage to the host body after it has finished transformation into a hive. While it had been previously discovered in autopsy that portions of the brain are hollowed out to serve as food, others are left intact, presumably to regulate what bodily functions continue. During the last round of experimentation, I took the opportunity to examine a hive at close range shortly after the transformation. While the eyes are eventually reached and used as a food source, at the point that performed her examination, they were still intact. Opening the eyelids and examining with a flashlight, something discovered that the host's eyes followed the beam. Experimentation was terminated, and no further testing is scheduled. Okay, <laughs> I think I speak for everyone here. I don't really want to know if that person is alive. So let's just say they're not and end the lecture, shall we? Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are. And you're all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to the reclusive extrovert, James Sauber, Chris Ball, Pablo Ice 917, Caleb Chaffins, Karim L. Ashmoe, Justin Day, Brockery Man, Thomas Morin, Curie Coma, White Crow, NJ Vojak, Crystal Spice, my archive curator Nick, King Madding, and The Wanderer. Thank you all so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevolgan. Thank you.